and life supporting zones on earth are together called biosphere all the uninhabitable places are called par biosphere biosphere is a large unit hence biosphere is divided into smaller units called ecosystems an ecosystem is a natural unit of biosphere it has both biotic and abiotic components which interact and influence each other the habitats such as terrestrial ecosystem forest ecosystem desert ecosystem pond ecosystem river ecosystem marine ecosystem etc the climate physical and chemical factors are the abiotic components of the ecosystem climate factors are solar radiation heat rain or snowfall etc physical factors are the type of soil pressure light gravity depth altitude etc acidity or alkalinity of the soil or water salt content types of salts inorganic and organic nutrients present in the ecosystem represent chemical factors all the living organisms that is bacteria fungi algae higher and lower plants and animals represent the biotic components of an ecosystem the existence of the ecosystem depends on the continued survival of the organisms in that ecosystem all the organisms require energy for growth reproduction and survival this energy is obtained by the organisms from the food they consume food chain for an organism to survive food must be produced and made available in its own ecosystem as you know children the plants are autotrophic and are the only organisms capable of carrying out photosynthesis and producing food in any ecosystem for this reason plants are called producers or primary producers of the ecosystem all the animals present in the ecosystem are the heterotrophy and cannot synthesize their own food material they depend on plants and other animals for obtaining their food requirements all the animals in the ecosystem are consumers as they consume the food produced in the ecosystem by plants herbivores consume whole plant or parts of a plant in the ecosystem as their food herbivores are therefore the primary consumers of the ecosystem some insects and pests on plants kathleen grassland rabbits and deer in a forest zooplankton in lakes and oceans some of the molluscs which eat algae are the examples of primary consumers some of the carnivores present in the ecosystem consume the herbivores as their food these are called secondary consumers fish that feeds on zooplankton wolves that eat rabbits in forests frogs and lizards that eat herbivores insects are examples of secondary consumers these secondary consumers in turn become food for the other carnivores carnivores which consume secondary consumers are called tertiary consumers snakes that eat frogs birds that eat fish are the examples for tertiary consumers an ecosystem therefore consists of primary producers primary consumers secondary consumers and tertiary consumers primary producers become food for primary consumers the primary consumers become food for secondary consumers and secondary consumers become food for 
tertiary consumers. This is called a food chain in the ecosystem. A food chain consists of producers and consumers. Some of the organisms in the ecosystem such as bacteria, fungi are heterotrophic and obtain their nutritional requirements by decomposing the dead bodies of both producers and consumers. These organisms are a special type of consumers and are called decomposers of the ecosystem. Food webs In nature, the food relationships are not so simple and cannot be explained by single food chain. For example, rats and insects eat seeds and other plant parts as their food. Insects are eaten by frogs and lizards. Rats and frogs are eaten by snakes. Lizards and snakes are eaten by birds. Thus a single plant or an animal may become food for more than one animal. Similarly, an animal may consume more than one type of food depending on its taste and availability of a particular type of food in the ecosystem. Thus, each organism in an ecosystem may be a member of more than one food chain. When we look at these relationships between various organisms for food in the ecosystem, it appears that several food chains are interlinked with one another forming a food web. A food web consists of several interlinked food chains and each organism in a food web will be a member of more than one food chain. In every food chain, the number of organisms present at each level decreases from producers to consumers. The number of plants that is primary producers is more than the herbivores that is the primary consumers and the number of primary consumers is more than the number of secondary consumers. Similarly, the number of secondary consumers is more than the number of tertiary consumers. Let us now discuss about the trophic level. As the food gives energy, we can say that at each level of the food chain, some amount of energy is available. The amount of energy available at each level of food chain is called trophic level. As food is transferred from one level to another level in the food chain, energy is also transferred from one trophic level to the next trophic level. Total amount of energy available at each trophic level decreases as we go up from the producers to the tertiary consumers. This is due to the lesser number of organisms present at each trophic level and also due to the loss of energy at each successive trophic levels. As some amount of energy is used by the organisms present at the trophic level. It should be remembered that entire energy present in the ecosystem is derived from sun and is distributed at various trophic levels.